Hello everyone and welcome to a special edition of Take Two Extra. I'm Lindsay Simmons, your host for today. Normally we put together a shorter video for you, but today we have an extra few minutes to talk with our Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum, Dr. Jack Silva. Dr. Silva, thank you so much for having us today. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning. Dr. Silva, we wanted to take a few minutes to ask a few questions about the BASD and Power Initiative about to begin in the Bethlehem Area School District. Students have been hearing a lot about the BASD and Power. Can you give us a general description of what it is and when it will be coming to our schools? Okay. Empower is all about the type of learning we want students to be able to do so that they are eventually ready for their uh, chosen career or their chosen college pursuits. So when we're talking about primarily middle school students and high school students, we're looking for learners to become more active, more personalized in their approach where students aren't necessarily receivers of content, but they become creators of content and they're able to use their individual skills and their creativity to be able to uh, take their learning and apply it rather than just simply receive it. The digital age allows us to do that in many more ways in uh, time that uh, transcends the school day and mediums that transcend traditional notebooks and pieces of paper. So by empowering students to be able to take greater control over their own learning and be uh, greater creators, that's what BASD Empower is all about. So we hear often of how the BASD wants to prepare its students with skills that they will need for future careers. Can you describe that more specifically? Sure. Well, there's complex thinking skills, the ability to think out of the box. Very rarely in college or in career do you have everything come prepackaged for you and be able to not have to figure it out. So thinking outside the box or complex critical thinking to apply to new circumstances and new situations, that's one of the most important skills. Uh, to be a creative thinker, to be able to express things in different ways, uh, add value to whatever is being communicated, essential skill. Uh, collaboration, uh, no one works in isolation. So both in terms of one-on-one uh, -on -one personally or in collaboration over different digital platforms, students need to be able to bring out the best in the people with whom they're working. Uh, interdisciplinary thinking, uh, very rarely now is life presented to you in subjects like, uh, for instance, even engineering is a combination of math and science and communications is a combination of technology and, and English and language arts. So subjects are becoming less discrete and they're becoming more integrated and blended. So the ability of students to be able to work in interdisciplinary ways is very important. Of course, people skills, uh, the ability to manage your time, manage your relationships, manage your emotions is uh, critically important for graduates. And then finally, having the sort of the modern work technical skills like uh, being able to manage and create social media, being able to uh, incorporate and use mobile technology as necessary, uh, being able to understand and manage your analytics and your data and then uh, be able to do all of this in the cloud so that we're not tied to individual locations or specific mm -hmm. spaces, but learning can exist in many areas and many formats at any time. So you frequently speak of the five C's. Can you explain the five C's for us and how they fit into the BSD in power? Five C's are, is education talk. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually Bethlehem education talk because if you read in um, uh, the latest information related to schooling, they talk about the four C's. In Bethlehem, we have to add an extra C. We have uh, big ambitions here. Uh, <laughs> critical thinking, as I talked about, is one of the C's. Students need to regularly, in all of their subjects, and all of their experiences, have opportunities to think critically. They have to be able to communicate the second C. And that's not just the way we're communicating today, but in all different types of platforms. They have to have the ability to collaborate. Uh, they no longer uh, does a, a person have the ability to work in isolation as a numbers cruncher mm -hmm. or as a, as a person on an assembly line. Um, those positions uh, exist, but uh, more and more occupations of the future are asking us to be able to bring out the best in each other. So see collaboration, extremely important. Uh, the world is for creative people to be able to express things in unique ways, in appealing ways, so creativity. 
and uh, this generation of students are just natural creators and, and have that sort of built into their DNA. And then the fifth C, which is more of a Bethlehem C, is citizenship. That we have to do all of this work with an idea on the public good, both what, how we're serving our community, but how we're also serving our own good as far as being able to manage our own social media, our own communications, so that we're living in safe and productive environments, both in school and in our community. So if we focus on those five C's and we empower individual teachers and individual students with the ability to put learning uh, in their own driver's seat, we're gonna transform education. So students are living more and more in the digital environment every year. Can you share what that means for our classrooms in the coming months and years? Well, you're probably already seeing uh, textbooks going away and digital content mm -hmm. becoming more and more prevalent in all of our core subjects, whether it's the Discovery Tech Book or it's the Envision Math Platform or it's our new ELA program coming in. Uh, the primary way you'll access curriculum is through uh, digital resources. So the stuff, the what, is becoming more and more digital. But more importantly, the, uh, the Empower allows us and a lot of the new digital resources and technology allow us to more formatively assess students along the way to get them know, to know them a little bit better. So in the old days, there was one teacher, 25 students, a delivery of established content, and it was the responsibility of the student to show that. Not much individualized understanding of the student. These new curricula and um, uh, assessment tools and digital tools allow us to know that Lindsay knows this compared to a standard, Jack knows that compared to a standard, and the teacher has the ability to give more personalized feedback, more differentiated instruction in real time for what the learner needs. That doesn't happen with pencil and paper and red markers uh, in, in the traditional format, but uh, the ability to have collaboration and communication feedback uh, through uh, the tools in the curriculum, very important. And uh, also in the classroom, I think you'll see a continued emphasis on creativity tools, whether that be WeVideo so that students mm -hmm. can create, all those things where kids are just natural creators and tinkerers anyway, but we need to, uh, to apply that uh, creativity suite to the work that they're doing and producing that's showing that they're able to reach grade level content. Screen time is an issue that concerns many students and parents. Can you elaborate on our approach to screen time? That's a good question. Uh, screen time is, is an important issue and parents have a right to be concerned. Uh, not all screen time is created equal. Uh, there's screen time on your phone versus the screen time that you would see on an educational tool like a Chromebook or a laptop. Um, the screen time that you spend on a phone is, is sort of different in its purpose and its use. This phone is created with an algorithm that sort of forces you to continue to want to look at it. Uh, to see you know, if somebody likes something, to see if something has been posted. Uh, the purpose of a phone is primarily in its social media and its communications is to make you want to look at it as often as you can. If that is what we're doing with technology, that, that's bad screen time, that's sort of passive consumption. That's a problem for both students and adults. What we want to do is shift that more to the active use of technology where it's uh, more of a focus on consumption, more on creation, more on using the technology, not to see how many likes you have or post pictures of what you're having for lunch, but use the technology for uh, cross-platform communication and developing a work product or being able to use media to express yourself in, in the relationship to an assignment that you have at school. So we don't want students going home or being in school and constantly being in front of the screen. That's not good screen time. But if technology is used as a tool for more learner-centered assignments and more creative assignments, and students are accessing things efficiently and making it part of their own time management skills, then, then we're being successful. But we wanna make sure that we're creating uh, good digital citizens who know the limits of screen time, know how to establish healthy and productive relationships with technology. And we'll be teaching that not only uh, in our own courses, but at the elementary level, we have a course in uh, digital citizenship, which hopefully gets them thinking this way from the very beginning of their education. 
but uh, screen time is important and uh, we want to see students move from the passive act activities of online gazing and looking to uh, active consumption for educational purposes. Well, students are so excited that they get their own Chromebook next year. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about that? I'm glad to. Um, students, as you know, aren't uh, strangers to Chromebooks. <laughs> They've been using Chromebooks in class for many years now. The difference is that next year, our plan is to give all 8th graders, 9th graders, and 10th graders their own Chromebook to take home and have around the clock for their use with all of our digital products and all of our digital tools. And we just happen to have one right here. Uh, so every student will be getting this Chromebook, the Lenovo 500e, as well as uh, an armor bag that uh, they can store it in and a charger so that they can ha always have it ready for school the next day. And this will replace what used to be a backpack full of textbooks and notebooks and pens and pencils, although you'll still have some of that uh, to carry around. But in this is uh, pretty much what you'll need. And it's uh, set up for learning. I mean, it's very durable. It uh, has a hinge that folds back into a 360, wow. so it can also be a, a touch screen at the same time. It has a built-in stylus, so there are times where it's still good to write things and you'll still be able to write and capture, uh, so you can still do your math problems on here in, in a digital environment. Uh, it has a, a backward facing and a world facing camera, so you could be a creator of your own movies. Um, it also is uh, pretty durable. I know Mrs. Bachman, our chief technology officer, dropped it from great heights, spilled stuff on it, although I don't recommend that, uh, and it's very durable. So. Uh, this will become a go-to piece of equipment, just like uh, uh, any student would you'd be expected to be seeing, uh, using the tools we have uh, and having it all um, uh, come through their Lenovo. So we're excited about that. And then in the 2020-21 school year, we would outfit the rest of the grades at, at the secondary level, 6, 7, uh, mm -hmm. 11, and 12 with uh, their Chromebook. Um, we're hopeful that uh, we're going to be able to distribute those quickly and very efficiently in the first week of the year, give the orientation to students and teachers so that they know exactly how to care for it and the policies behind it. And we'll of course post all of that stuff on online so that everyone has access to the information. But this, this is going to be the handy tool that will be sort of the standard issue <coughs> coming up in September. Well, how can students, teachers, and parents get more information about the BASD in power? Well, they could watch BASD TV uh, like they are now, or they can uh, uh, go to the uh, at BASD Empower website, which is linked through the district website. And on that, you'll see tabs for, for students, a tab for parents, and, and a tab for teachers. And with that, there'll be links, frequently asked questions, video content, so that uh, as uh, the awareness and understanding of Empower grows over the summer and in the school year, there'll be handy resources to access for your questions. Of course, you can always ask your administrators, your principals, and your assistant principals, or call anyone at the district office. Well, Dr. Silva, thank you so much for spending some time mm -hmm. with us today. And that's all the time we have today on this special edition of Take Two Extra. I'm Lindsay Summons. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.